What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is a special video as it's the very first series and event that I'm going to play this year at the WSOP. Playing at the brand new Bali slash Paris Convention Center and uh, checking out the sights and sounds for the first time this year. I'm looking forward to get into it. And uh, last year I didn't catch many tournaments. Uh, at the WSOP. I went 0 for 24 this year, trying to run it up and change this up. So it's the first year we're playing a six max, $1,500 buy-in. First event, just got into Vegas. Let's try to run it up. Before I go fishing around at the WSOP this summer, one way I personally like to relax is fishing on my phone. On Fishing Clash, you can travel all around the world and catch tons of different fish at the comfort of your own phone without the hassle of repairing in real life. It's honestly so cool to be able to travel to different locations and fish at different scenery like Hawaii, the Great Barrier Reef, or even the Amazon. And even today, I actually caught my very first shark. So now I'm able to keep that in my inventory and save this forever. And starting on July 4th, throughout the week there are tons of events and competition that you'll never get bored of. As a new player, you start in Florida Fishery with some of the most realistic graphics I've seen. With the July 4th special event, you have a chance at catching bottles with the Founding Fathers signatures throughout the whole week. The developers have so many more surprises in store, so to find out more, just download Fishing Class with the link down below or use the QR code on screen. Use my gift code Rampage to get a few special awards. With my code you'll be able to receive an advanced rod and power-ups to help you compete versus other players and catch bigger fish. This is only for people who are new players and redeeming these rewards are as simple as three easy steps. Today, I'm gonna go fishing twice. First on my phone to relax and calm myself down before reeling in some fish out there at the felt at the World Series of Poker. Big thank you to Fishing Class for sponsoring this video and check out the app yourself by clicking the link down below. Let's catch some fish today. Starting off my very first WSOP bracelet event this summer, into the 6 max we go in level 4. I pick up 10 7 of diamond in the big blind and get a low jack raised to 1000. The button makes the call, and here with a suited hand playing very deep, I'm happy to make the call as well and see a flop. So going to a flop three ways of jack 10 3 rainbow. With one diamond out there, the low jack bets out 1700. The button decides to call here, and here I decided to peel one card as I'm given a good price. I have a pair, definitely could hit two pair, hit a diamond to get committed. So I make the call as well. So we're still going three ways to the turn, which comes a jack. Not the worst card in the world now as it's less likely someone has a jack and maybe my 10 could win. And here, when I check, low jack checks, the button actually checks back. So it seems pretty easy and clear that none of these players have a jack as I never see anyone would check back as trips. So now thinking that I'm either going to win this one at showdown or I could bluff and rep a jack. We're off to a river which comes in consequential brick. And with my second pair, don't think I need to bluff out just yet. I decided to check and when the low jack bets out 5,000. The other player ends up folding, and from what I thought on the turn, she never has a jack, betting pretty big here either as a bluff or potentially just an overpair. I think the best way to win here is not by calling the 5,000. Certainly could fold as well, but uh, it's early in the tournament. Let's try to apply maximum pressure and jam to put all those overpairs in a gross spot. She has about 18,000 in stack, and I rip it all in. She snap calls. Nope, not a tough spot as she only shows pocket aces. Clearly not a hard decision for her, and she wins. What a classic fashion to start off the WSOP series than just punting. The very next deal, I have a very short stack, about 4,000 left. I pick up ace, eight off suit in the small blind. Cutoff raises to 1,000, and I'm all in versus him. The cutoff makes the call with queen jack, so I'm ahead, but by not much. When the flop comes jack high, it's going to be hard for me to improve, and just like that, GG's. To bullet number one of the WSOP, going to fire again in the six max, hoping for better results next time. All right, I forgot the, the golden rule, don't bluff people off aces, fuck. Onto the rebuy, period, we go. There's uh, two max bullets in this thing. Another $1,500, let's, 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 let's do it. All right, after hopping around in the rebuy line, we're in level five now, and I pick up ace queen off suit on the button. There's a hijack player who's the chip leader at this table. He decided to limp. Has a pretty interesting strat of either limping everything or raising 5x. So anyways, I'm trying to isolate and play hands against this player. I raise it up to 2000 and he ends up calling. We're going to a flop which comes three deuce deuce rainbow. 
And on this board here, sitting with ace high, he actually leads out for 3,000. Uh, okay, seen him do some funky stuff the past few hands, and I have two overcards, a backdoor straight draw, and who the hell knows what he could have, but I make the call for 3,000. When the turn comes a five, it does bring in that backdoor straight possibility to the wheel, but he decides to check. I'm happy to take a free card and just check back. Now going to a river, which comes in ace. Sitting with top pair, which is nice, I do lose to any four that makes a straight, but it doesn't matter. He bets out 6,000, and I am going to make the call now with top pair and a good kicker. Never going to fold in this spot, and he shows us five ten of hearts. Okay. I get gifted some chips, and it's a good start to bullet number two. In the following hand, I pick up ace queen once again. Now at level six, blinds have increased, and I raise it up to 1400. Folds around to the big blind who makes the call, so we're going to a flop, which comes eight three deuce all spades. Not having a spade in my hand, and he checks it over to me, I decided to just check back on this board, as it doesn't really hit me much, and I have no spades to go along with it. So we're going to see a free turn, which is the queen of hearts. He checks for a second time and now sitting with top pair, top kicker. Seeing his passive action, I could only assume that my hand is ahead right now. So I just had to bet out 1500 for value, maybe charge some spade draws, maybe he has a worse queen. And for 1500, he does make the call. Going to a river now, which is the three of clubs. And for a third time, he checks. Seeing this, it's pretty clear that I have the best hand by far. And I want to just get value from worst one pairs or a worst queen that he could easily have here. So I decided to size up, bet for value to 6,500. Close to the size of the pot here. And this player is going over his options and thinking through it. I'm just hoping for a call and not a fold. But we forgot he could also check raise. And that's what he decides to do. Check raise to 17.5 thousand. What? Thinking that he is either just trying to rep a flush or a three for trips. I'm not really sure what's happening and how we could have that as played. And thinking that I don't have the ace of spades, which is a really good bluff card for him to have. He easily can just be bluffing with just the ace of spades as a blocker. And uh, top pair, top kicker is going to be hard to fold. So I make the call. If he's bluffing, then I win. If he has a flush, then good for him. And he shows us. Ace Queen himself, but of spades. Wow, got completely wrecked and owned here. He just flopped the nuts and got a really good board for him to make the maximum. Chipping down to about 13,000 now, not going great. All right, a lot of excitement and hype around the WSOP. Day one right now, not looking amazing. Uh, I have like 10,000 chips. Blinds are going up to 800. We're on break. This might be a, sh <laughs> this might be a really quick day. Yeah, that's the update for now. But you know, still alive. You can always spin up a spin up a short stack. Is it likely? Probably not. But th there's still hope. So we'll be positive. And you know what? There's there's five more weeks of tournament poker. If this isn't the right day, then. It's always tomorrow. Coming back from break, blinds have increased again, and I have 9,000 in my stack in the small blind. There's a cutoff player who limps. He's the chip leader at the table. The button folds, and uh, yeah. Seeing that he limped 10-5 suited, my peel of king-8 offsuit should be ahead of 10-5 suited. So I'm a short stack, and I'm going to gamble here early on in this tournament. I rip it all in. The big blind folds, and the big stack decides to call and somehow woke up with pocket 8s. Did not expect a hand as good as that. I only have one over card. The flop is not good, but runner, runner, suck out for Broadway. Oh my God. That is the run good I needed. I'm still alive in this tournament, which is amazing. And yeah, luck box population one. All right, after that big double up that was much needed, I pick up a real hand now, pocket jacks on the button. There is a hijack raise to 3,000. This is the same big stack player. Then the cutoff decides to go all in. He covers me by just a hair. So facing a raise and a three bet shove. Yeah, I'm on the button. I'm going to go all in with jacks either. Nothing to do here. Everyone else ends up folding. And we see that we're up against cutoff's ace queen off suit. So let's just win a flip maybe. Me too. The run out comes clean for pocket jacks. What a nice come up here, finding two double ups, 
back-to-back spots. Pretty huge now that I have over 40,000 in chips and there's no time to waste as the very next deal, I pick up pocket nines. The hijack player who I just doubled up through jams his entire stack of 1600, not a whole lot. So with pocket nines trying to isolate, I three bet to 4,000. Then the button to my left, he also goes all in for 12,000. Pretty small stacks here at this table. It's gonna create high variance. Eshton folds around to me and I am going to be all in calling his 12,000. We get to see what we're up against. The button, bad news. The stack that's bigger than mine has pocket tens and the hijack has ace seven off suit. I'm heavily dominated in this spot. Gonna need to spike a nine on the red out, but sadly it doesn't come. And yeah, after a few action packed minutes, I am sitting with 32,000 after all this madness. More madness we go jumping on into the next level, level eight. I pick up ace nine off suit in the small blind and face a button all in for 7.5K. This is equivalent to just 7.5 big blinds and yeah, ace nine off suit's pretty good. So I decide to rejam. The big blind folds and we're up against the buttons pocket fours. Crap, if any other hand, I knew I had a chance, but we all know pocket fours can't lose. And of course it does end up winning. So I double up this player up. I chip down just a tad bit. And moving on to the next interesting spot with ace four off suit in the big blind. Action folds around to the small blind, the same player once again, and now he decides to go all in for 10,000 this time. Yeah, I have ace high versus a 10 big blind shove. That's going to make the call. This player shows king deuce off suit. So from my knowledge, ace high beats king high until there's a king on the flop. The cool thing is that at least I did flop a four and a heart draw potentially. The turn brings a sweat. So now all my hearts are live. River four for trips. Seems like you can either have pocket fours or any hand with a four itself. They're not going to lose all ends. Nice pickup of 10,000 chips here in this spot. All right, on a field trip, going to another room. Got a bunch of chips. And it's cool, you can bring water in this place. Not getting yelled at. My table at the Paris Convention Center ends up breaking, and now we actually go to the main room, which is the Bally's Convention Center. Little five minute walk, and moving on to my very next table. We're in level nine now, where I pick up Ace Jack offsuit in the hijack. I put in a raise to 2,600 here, and action folds around to the big blind player, the new chip leader at this table. He ends up making the call. Now going to a flop of 974, two hearts. He checks it over to me and I don't really think I'm able to bet a whole lot on this board. Doesn't hit me a lot and should hit this player a lot more and especially since he covers me, action goes check check. The turn comes a queen now and now he decides to bet out 2100. Pretty small bets and sometimes I think ace high can be ahead here. Considering we're also in position, I decided to see a river and make the call. Pot's building a little bit and the river comes the king of clubs. Another card that should favor me more than this player, and he bets again, 6,000 this time. And I'm just not really sure if I'm believing what he's selling. The story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If he's betting a queen on the turn here for value, then why is he betting so big on the river now when an over card comes? I think the king just smashes me a whole lot more, and with jack 10 being the nuts and conveniently holding a jack in my hand, I want to put some one pair holdings that are betting for thin value to a bad spot. I put in a raise here as a bluff with ace jack high to 18,000. And immediately it's good news because he doesn't look happy. But unfortunately, he does end up flicking in a call begrudgingly because he has a big stack. I show the ace high, which cannot be any good. And he shows us king four off suits. Oh boy. Okay. Bottom pair on the flop gets there on the river for a really nice card for him. He ends up winning with two pair. Nice hands of this guy, but we're chipping down. All right, just uh, we're on dinner break right now. Just avoided the whole crowd of poker players that are all simultaneously on dinner break. I think there's like 2,300 entrants in this thing, and it's nice to make it to dinner break somehow. I have about 60,000 in chips after that little bluff, um, but playing a lot of hands six-handed, and it's hard to capture everything. Just winning a lot of small pots, not going to showdown, and that doesn't really make an interesting vlog. So at least I'm showing uh, the highlights some punts, some all-ins, but somehow found a way to spin up 
10,000 chips at the 800 big blind level, now to 61,000. We'll see. Who knows how much uh, is gonna make it to the money, but I'd like to make my very first WCP cash here. Let's make it happen. After dinner break, we skipped level 10. It wasn't a great level, you chipped down, and we're in level 11 now. Blinds have increased, and I'm sitting with about 20 big blinds. Action folds around to this small blind player, the guy I just battled with, and he's the chip leader by far. And he just decides to go all in, cover me by a thousand, and I peel queen eight of hearts. It's time to gamble. It's certainly good enough to make the call, so I stick it in here, and I see him up against jack eight offsuit. Basically, the perfect scenario that I ever wanted to be in. I'm ahead by a lot. Just got to fade a jack, and the run out is no sweat. Now, I find a huge double up when I needed it the most. I have over 80,000 in my stack. And after this double up, the floor announces that 359 players will make the money. 450,000 US dollars for first place, and we're sitting with 600 players left. Time to grind this out. The next two clips you'll see, I chip down a little bit, but end up going all in a few times with ace eight off suit in the small blind, end up getting that fold through. Next, I pick up pocket sevens in the big blind and three bet squeeze, go all in with my 65,000 chip stack and end up getting folds as well. So chipping down from paying the blinds as we're playing really shorthanded, but finding different ways to chip up by going all in. After that, blinds have increased and I pick up ace four of clubs in the cutoff. There's a hijack raise to 5,000, which has similar size stacks. I three bet to 12.5 thousand and end up getting folds. Just showing this small clip once again, because it's crucial to get these three bet bluffs through. Now I'm up to 90,000. After chipping up the hard way, I'm in the big blind and when the button raises to 5,500. Then the small blind jams his entire stack for 64,000. When with about 100,000 in my stack, I peel ace queen off suit. Yep, this is a good hand in facing these two position activities. I'm going to go all in myself and rejam as it's a good spot to do so. The button doesn't have a whole lot and ends up folding and we see that we're gonna battle it out in the small one for a pretty big pot. He has pocket eights. Let's win a flip. Come on, dealer, let's do it. And the flop turns and rivers are brick freaking city. This was a much needed flip to win. Pocket eights wins, unfortunately. And now my stack is crippled after working really hard to build it up. But the very next deal, no time to waste in these six max shorthanded tournaments. I have King Jack offsuit in the small blind with a small stack. Action folds to the button who raises to 5,000. And considering my stack is on life support now, I decide to go all in. Luckily, everyone folds. So I chip up to 10,000 more playing five handed. Then the next clip, I pick up pocket sixes in the big blind. There is a raise and I go all in with a pair. It's a good hand and luckily they all fold. So once again, I'm chipping up. I'm not dead yet with about 50,000 in chips with 504 players left in the tournament. Still gonna need 150 players more to bust. After paying the blinds a few more times, I pick up pocket fours, the hand in the low jack. I'm first to act with about 15 big blinds. At this stage, there's about 400 players left in the tournament and this is for everyone at home that sweated out that bracelet tournament. I am all in here, first to act. The player at my left with a massive stack. Uh, bad news immediately as he raises to 100,000 to isolate. Oh no, this can't be good. Then onto the button player who goes all in for about 150,000, give or take. Oh dear, this has become a very bad situation as it's a three-way all in. Pocket fours can never be good here, but it hasn't failed me yet. I see that we're up against pocket jacks on my left and pocket queens on the button. Going to a flop, give me a four dealer. The flop comes five, three, three. Oh my God, that is as close as you could possibly get. But the turn comes a deuce. More outs. I'm open-ended and a set draw. Come on, dealer. It's a six on the river. For my tournament life, I find the disgusting triple up. Pocket fours is the hand. The legend lives on. You can't freaking lose all ins with pocket fours. For this fat triple up, my stack is now up to 140,000. I'm so hyped and fist bumping in my head. Whew, trying to contain my excitement from this hand. We're moving on with a big stack and most likely gonna make the money. In this hand, pick up another pocket pair though, pocket eights in the hijack. 
I raised it up to 7,000, and the player to my left who I just sucked out on. He's pretty aggressive and three bets to 20,000. Action folds to me, and uh, yeah, I'm sitting with about 150k in my stack. Definitely going to call, but not loving it, as it seems like I'm going to lose a lot of the time playing this hand out of position. But, you know, let's see a flop. The flop comes 7, 6, 4, rainbow. Okay, as good of a damn flop for me with pocket eights, I decided to check here. Then this player bets pretty damn big, 33,000. I'm counting out my stack, and I have about 120k here. And honestly, I just don't think I should jam too often in this spot. Granted, I do have an overpair, which is good, but all the hands that would call an all-in would smash me. And I also have a gut shot straight draw, which is also pretty helpful. Anyways, my hand's obviously good enough for a call, so I continue. And we see the turn, which comes a nine. Now I'm open-ended with a lot more outs. Unfortunately, action goes check, check, so no money goes in the middle here. And we see a free turn, which is the bink 10. Now, basically sitting with the nuts, I'd only lose to jack eight, which shouldn't really be considered here in the spots. And I'm first to act, and I decided to bet out a really small block bet of 12,000. I stick it in the middle, and he, uh, my opponent. Let's take a moment of silence to remember him and his tournament life, because he goes all in. Amazing for me, I snap call. He shows four or five of hearts for a bluff, and I get the insane max full double up of 98,000 on this river. Oh my God, one double up followed by another is huge, and I have close to 300,000 chips. Went from being on life support with pocket fours to being a big stack in this tournament. With blinds increasing the next level, I pick up pocket eights once again. There's 365 players left, so we're six people away from making it into the money. There's a player in the big stack in the hijack raised to 9,000. I decided to make the call as I'm happy to battle with them. We're trying to get more chips and accumulate here. We're going to a flop of Jack Jack Deuce to spades. I check it over to him and he bets out 7,000 on this paired board. He has a whole lot of nothing here, so it's a pretty easy call. Let's see a turn. Turn comes the Ace of Diamonds. Uh, not so amazing anymore. I check it over to him and it's definitely a pretty good card for him to bet and rep here. And he does do that. He bets out 22,000. This player covers me by a little bit, and considering that we're super close to making the money, I see this player being smart enough to try to apply some ICM pressure as we're both big stacks colliding in this hand. But uh, I think I got to defend sometimes with pocket eights, definitely not all the time. And here I decided to go with it for now. I make the call. It's a pretty dicey spot. But let's see a good looking river, which is the Queen of Clubs. That is so, so, so bad for me. All of his bluffs get there, and when action goes check, check, I know I'm beat. I show it over and he shows queen 10 of hearts. So I can't win them all with pocket eights. They can't bail me out every single time and I chip down a little bit. Shortly after this hand, the dealers are now standing up as we are playing hand for hand, pretty close to making the money with 361 players left. And shortly after that clip, it's announced. We are in the money officially. 359 players remain in the field. I have 250,000 in my stack, and it's nice to cash my very first ever live WSOP bracelet event. Let's try to run it up in this thing. So my stack fluctuates for the next hour or two, and this next hand is in level 17 now. With Ace King offsuit, it's the last level of the day. There's a low jack raised to 16,000. And with a really good hand and a premium, I three bet to 40,000. Folds around to this player and he calls pretty quickly with a stack covering mine. We're off to a flop of Jack three, five, two hearts. Not the best flop because I whiff everything, but I do have the ace of hearts, which isn't so bad. He checks to me and I decide to throw out a small bet of 25,000. And for 25K, he makes the call. When the turn comes, another Jack. Not a lovely spot here, and even worse, he just decides to go all in himself. He just jams, he covers me, and uh, I'm going to fold my 140,000 chip stack now. Not going great, but once again, dealer rewards me with the very next hand. I pick up pocket eight, next deal. I raise it up to 16,000 and get the big blind to make the call. So going heads up here in position again, the flop comes king 9-4 to spades. He checks it over to me, and I just have third pair on this board. I think my hand just favors a check a lot of the time, so I just go do that. When the turn comes the five of hearts, it's a decent card for me, at least a card under my pair. 
And this big one player bets out 24,000. Uh, I guess mixed feelings about calling or folding. Probably folding makes my life a lot easier, but you know, we're not trying to live an easy life here. I would make the call and try to navigate a river, which comes the six of spades. A little annoying. It's uh, not an easy card for me to fold on now sitting with third pair, but he bets out 25,000 again. Yeah, I, I really don't love an easy spot, I guess. Uh, pretty annoying, and I think I'm just going to go with my read that this player doesn't bluff a whole lot. Uh, he's probably betting really small because he has a 9, maybe, and he's going to get max value if I call him off, so I don't. I fold, chip down to about 80,000. It's about 10 big blinds, and I need another miracle, mainly just hoping I see pocket 4s again. All right, let's let's uh, let's try to make this miracle happen. It's not pocket 4s, but it's king 10 off suits with 78,000 in my stack. Under 10 big blinds, I decide to go all in. Bad news, the button rejams with a massive stack, so that's really not great. And even worse news, the big blind wakes up with a hand and calls. Let's see what we're up against, because I need another fat triple. The button has pocket fives, and the big blind has pocket queens. So honestly, if I can triple up with fours over two dominating pairs, at least my king is live. Let's hit that thing for a triple up. The flop comes a five. That is GG's. Pocket fives, flops of freaking sets. And I am out in 183rd place. It's nice to run deep in a tournament finally in a live WSOP one. But uh, yeah, it's a good start to the first trip and on to the outro. All right, it was a very long and eventful day. Uh, first day here at the WSOP. We played poker for nine freaking hours. It's a little after 1 a.m. and I cashed. So that's cool. Um, just a really long day, super tired. In for two bullets. I was out in 183rd place. To be quite honest with you, right now, real time, I don't know how much that is, but you'll see on screen how much I cashed out for. I think it's at least over $3,000, so at least profit. Day one of playing tournaments, it's pretty rare, and hopefully I captured all the ups and downs. I'm not really that upset, I'm just really tired. Uh, usually I'm super upset when I bust, but here it's nice to make the money, break the, the seal of, of bricking. Like I've bricked 24 bullets before today at the WSOP series, so it's nice to break that, finally get my first cash at the WSOP, you know, grand whole event thing, and that's cool. I don't know how much it is, but you'll, you guys have already seen on the screen. I'm gonna go to bed, more tournaments tomorrow. Hopefully you enjoyed this one as a long video. Thank you so much for watching and shout out to Pocket Fours, man. That hand literally can't lose. There's some magic to it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like. Also, caching a WSOP event is pretty difficult. Only 15% make it. Big thank you to Fishing Clash for sponsoring this video. If you want to download the game, click the QR code and download it there. Thanks for sponsoring. Thanks for watching. Peace.